how are you? It's a new week and a new video. I've honestly been struggling so hard with editing this video because I don't want this Japan travel series to end, but this is the last week. I'm so grateful to have been able to edit them. I feel like through editing them, I could revisit some of those memories, but I'm finally coming to terms with this being the end of the Japan series. Luckily, I still have some physical reminders of those memories. I thought it would be fun to kind of go through some of these together, share some of the clips that I still have left to share with you, as well as some memories that I have behind these items. So yeah, let's get into it. Actually, before we get into it, I'm gonna make myself a cup of matcha, so feel free to grab your favorite cup of coffee, tea, and we can meet back here in a few minutes. Yeah, this is the first time in a while that I've done like more of a chatty vlog. I love silent vlogs. That's what I've been doing with the Japan travel series, but I'm still trying to figure out my style. I'm like pretty new to YouTube still and I don't know. I love silent vlogs, but I also kind of miss the chatty, cozy type of vlog. Probably be doing both. So yeah, what kind of videos do you guys like? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Woo! Look at that. Cheers! Happy weekend or whenever you're watching. Mmm, <laughs> that was so good. Okay, <laughs> so as you may have seen in some of the previous vlogs, we spent the first week at my family's house in Miyagi Prefecture. It's a little more north of Tokyo. I loved shopping in Sendai. One of my favorite stores was called Standard Products. I believe it's a subsidiary of Daiso home goods, kitchenware at just really affordable prices. I snagged a few things, one of which was diffusers. I really like more kind of musky scents, so I went with this one. It's deep in the forest for 500 yen. That's a good deal. I also snagged from Standard Products a little planter, and it's so cute. It's like smaller than the size of my hand. I want to put a little plant in it. Isn't that cute? Another special mention was three coins. I went to the one in Sendai Station, but they have locations everywhere in Japan. The whole concept is everything is 300 yen. So similar to the concept of Daiso, everything's really affordable. They had really cute kitchenware there. All right, moving on to maybe my favorite store, Loft. It is a department store with several stories. It's another household goods slash lifestyle kind of department store. Anything from stationery, kitchenware, interior decor, skincare, cosmetics, they literally have everything. So this store is a little bit on the pricier side compared to a place like Snare Products or Three Coins, but they do have a big variety of things. Let's start with my favorite category, stationery. The location in Sendai specifically had a discount section, so if they do, I recommend checking that place out first. Um, but here are some examples of some stationary products that I found. Look how cute. So these are letter and envelope sets and it's like a little fruit sandwich. This cute little bread themed one. This was also 50% off. This was another letter set. The cool thing about this one is that these papers are actually seed papers so you can plant them. I thought these would be super cute to send letters home. Um, I really miss like slow snail mail writing, so I have a new set to work with now. I also snagged a few from this collection by Delphonics. It's a Japanese stationery company. They just have these really beautiful designs. This is a little card holder. I put my Japan pass in this one. Another letter set and a roll bond notebook. So super cute. I just loved this design. I actually got one for my sister too. Grid paper in there as well. So next up we have these cute highlighters. I think they were inspired by a cosmetic brand, but I just really, they're really nice to hold and super light and compact. And so I got these two colors. These were actually like a mini gift from my sister. Thank you, Lena. I got one in more of like a pistachio color and like a beige latte color. I use them daily when I'm journaling. Okay, moving on to bento boxes. We spent the first week while in Japan with our family. And while we had these delicious meals outdoors, some of the most memorable meals were actually the home cooked meals. My aunt just poured so much love and care into the meals that she made and I felt so much love from them. And so I was just inspired to start creating more meals at home and make them look cute and put a lot of effort into 
more of the presentation just as a form of self-care. So I got a few bento items here that I'm excited to show you. This was also from Loft. It's like a bento bag. I picked something that was a little bit bigger that would really come in handy for picnics and things like that. So the first bento box I got is this beautiful dark wood kind of bean shaped cute little bento box. It comes with a ribbon, another band just to keep it secure, and also a seal and a little divider there. A lot of the bento boxes are pretty small. This is kind of a, a larger one actually. While we're still on the topic of bento boxes, I highly recommend actually checking out Daiso. I know we have Daiso in the States and in a lot of countries outside of Japan, but Daiso in Japan is just, there's so much of a selection and a lot of the things were obviously much more cheaper than what you would find in a place like Loft. And they were still really like nice items. So the first one that I wanted to show you was this other bento box I got. Believe it or not, this was only 300 yen and it comes with chopsticks inside as well as a little compartment for um, some sort of sauce or dressing. If you have a chance to look at bento boxes, crazy cute, like very extra. Um, so I wanted to get a few accessories. I got one of these um, that you can poke into your food and they're just so darn cute. A little um, seaweed hole puncher. When you make onigiri, it'll come with this kind of panda shaped face. So. <laughs> super random but also really cute just when you open up the bento box it's just you'll just be filled with so much love this is an example of something that's way cheaper in daiso i think they were selling something very similar for like ten dollars in loft and this was i think it was like for a set of two maybe 200 yen so highly recommend checking daiso out before moving on to the second week in kyoto i have a few special finds that i wanted to share with you first one is from this store called Ao Paradi. This was a really nice fragrance brand that we stumbled across in Sendai Station. So if you're more into musky scents that are still a little bit more feminine, I would highly recommend checking them out. Um, they also have, you know, sweeter scents as well, but this was an example of one that I really liked. The other special mention is the special rare candy. Now I've never seen something like this before. It's called Shimabashira, roughly translated to mean frosted columns. So it's covered in this layer of sugar because the pieces are really fragile and it's considered really rare and hard to get because they don't mass produce these and they're only made during a specific time during the winter by a company in Sendai. The fact of eating it reminds me of like a cotton candy. It instantly melts in your mouth, but it's such an interesting texture. It's like a fun experience to open with friends or family. So now moving on to Kyoto. My favorite little town that we visited in Kyoto was a town called Uji. This town is known for both their matcha and green tea, and we just had to go there. If you wanna see more details from our time in Uji, you can check out the last vlog I posted. I show you all of the places we visited there. I just wanted to highlight a few of the matcha and green tea places that we visited. I went through Reddit forum after Reddit forum, trying to find the more well-known brands for matcha. So these are just a few that I found. They have a few branches in Uji. The first branch we went to was nearby the temple. They had a huge cafe and then a smaller uh, matcha and goods shop next to it. The cafe was so beautiful. It was right by the Uji River and just breathtaking views. We had matcha soba there and I was just sipping on my genmai cha and it was like so heavenly. They also have a range of matcha flavor profiles there. I went with more of a medium roast and I really like the taste. It's still very light and earthy and I just really loved it. So just a disclaimer, I'm probably really butchering the names of these places, but I'll include the text here. This was also a very popular place when we were there. It was super crowded. I grabbed another matcha to try as well as a green tea to try. Now this was the place where I learned that there are so many types of green tea. They had a really nice explanation card um, in all different kinds of languages. So feel free to read and learn all the different types and the brewing methods for each. And then lastly, I wanted to mention this store. It was run by some really cute Japanese ladies and they were happy to sample different green teas for you. First of all, they package it so nicely. I just wanna show you the canister because it's so pretty this beautiful pink color. 
I ended up going with Essentia, which is the first harvest of the year. It tends to be a little sweeter and it's a pretty popular pick. If you're looking for nicer gifts for friends or family, I would actually highly recommend considering either a green tea or a matcha, just because the quality is unmatched. Like I said, the matchas are so light and earthy and it has this vibrant green color which shows that it was harvested at the right time. They're also really light and don't take up too much space which is definitely a plus if you're bringing home a lot of gifts. So we did a lot of shopping in Kyoto and one of our favorite areas to shop was Teramachi Street. They just had lines of vendors. One of my favorite places in Teramachi Street to visit was called Den on the Table. I was actually shocked at their affordable prices for local high quality tableware, all made in Japan. They had so many beautiful pieces and at such an affordable price. I was running out of room in my suitcase, so I only got this one, but it is beautiful. I don't know if you can tell the detail, but this one, for example, was six, 1,640 yen. Speaking of which, presentation and packaging were at such a high standard in Japan. We ended up going to a bookstore when we were in Sendai, and there were so many books about how to design the presentation of meals, and they really treated it as an art with color theory and everything. And especially with Asian cooking, there's a lot of side dishes. So I grabbed a few dishes from the dollar store. I wish I remember what the dollar store was called, but I'm sure you can find something similar at Daiso. I'm excited to use these as we start cooking more at home. And these will just be a nice reminder of Japan. Another place I loved in Teramachi Street was a local stamp shop. They make custom name stamps but they also have a huge selection of other stamps and ink pads. So I actually first purchased this cute little persimmon stamp because I am obsessed with persimmons. I fell in love with these stamps. The detail is so crisp on these stamps. So when we were in the area again, I grabbed a few more. So they have a variety of different kinds. I kind of went more with a flower theme, but I'll swatch a few. They also had all of these ink pads from Artnik. They were just these beautiful, earthy, muted colors. Kind of in the same area as the local stamp shop, there was another store and I wish I got the name of it. I feel like they specialize in Japanese incense, so they had tons of brands of incense there. They also had room fragrance and a lot of other fun traditional Japanese gifts. I grabbed a few of these tea canisters. They are so beautiful. I loved all of the designs. So colorful and cute. Um, I grabbed these for my tea powders, especially with matcha because they tend to oxidize quickly when they're exposed to the sun. So I'm really excited to use these. Another special mention was Mulateki Goods and Wares. They have a variety of goods from local businesses. If you're looking for a place to buy souvenirs, they have a lot of unique coffee and snacks and little light things that you can bring home. So highly recommend checking that place out as well. So while in Kyoto, we of course had to visit all of those touristy places. We went to the Golden Pavilion, which was actually so much more impressive and magical in person. But actually on our way there, we stumbled across this hole in the wall restaurant. When we walked in, it was just the owner and the part-time staff member. It was both a market to pick up different side dishes and onigiri, in the front but in the back they also have a kind of sit down restaurant we went there for their breakfast set and believe it or not this whole thing was 350. it included two onigiris this beautiful miso soup that was just so creamy and it also had this plate with fresh fruits and fresh vegetables i'm going to include their instagram here because it was just so nice to find this hidden gem and if you happen to be going in the same area i highly recommend checking them out we also visited a beautiful Zen garden nearby. It was full of tourists, but they were still able to maintain the peaceful elements there. And I really started to notice and appreciate the details of creating and designing a space like that. Um, there was one area specifically with this beautiful fountain, and I just love the message there. It was just such a good reminder to be happy with what you have. And I know that sounds so cliche, but and it's something that I want to adopt on my YouTube channel of like capturing all of the details of everyday life that make it beautiful. We also stayed at an Airbnb that was nearby a temple and I'll include some clips here but it was a really interesting experience again such peaceful energy there and if you're in the area they're a really nice option for lodging. 
and super clean, well-kept area. That's just a very peaceful way to end and start your day. So yeah, I'll include some clips here just so that you can see the space but it was really nice. Finally, we went to the famous Arashiyama bamboo forest. Unpopular opinion, but it was a little too busy for me. I don't know if it was the time of day that we went, but it was just really crowded. The bamboo was really pretty and it was nice for photos. Also now knowing that that place was so crowded, I kind of wish we checked out some of the other areas, especially because that area is known for their onsens. So for next time. And then they're also really known for their shopping street. Again, insanely busy there. There were a few places that I wanted to highlight that were extra cute. First of one being a chopstick boutique or store. Some of these chopsticks went up for crazy amounts. I, n I never knew you could spend that much on uh, chopsticks, <laughs> but they were beautiful chopsticks. They had cute little accessories for chopstick holders. So it was really cute. They also had a Rilakkuma shop. I grew up with Rilakkuma and I'm just so biased to Rilakkuma. They had a cafe there and everything was Rilakkuma themed. It was just super cute. So at the end of the day, we ended up going to a kakikori place, but you guys, it was so good. It was just super light and fluffy. They had both regular seating and tatami seating. And it was just kind of a nice break to take away from all the noise of the main street. So if you need a breather from your shopping, definitely check that place out. There were also just some amazing meals that we had in Kyoto, like jaw-dropping meals, beautifully put together, delicious. Um, some we had to wait in line for over an hour, totally worth it. I'll include the names of them here if you want to check them out on your own. These places were probably the most memorable um, restaurants that we visited in Kyoto. But yes, this video is getting pretty long, so I think I'm just gonna end it here. As always, thank you so much for watching and for commenting on my videos. I have been so giddy recently reading all of your comments. It totally makes my day. Like I said, it makes me like so giddy. I just wanna thank you. My inner child wants to thank you because this has been a dream of mine for so long to make videos and the fact that there are people out there watching the videos just makes me so happy. So I hope they bring you as much joy as it brings me to make them. I'm really excited to get back into cozy desks and journaling videos. So if that sounds like your jam, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!